Are there too many monster taming games thus saturating the genre? This is a topic I've seen brought forth multiple times over the last few months by both game developers and you guys via the comment section of my videos. This video is going to be formatted as a discussion as I want to hear your guys thoughts and opinions after you're done watching. We're really going to break down what the monster taming genre is and my thoughts on the whole situation, but keep in mind that these are my opinions and not the objective truth. Anyways, that said, sit back, relax, enjoy some random monster taming gameplay, and let's talk. Okay, so the basis for this idea is that there are dozens of monster taming games, therefore each game gets less attention, less funding via Kickstarter, and ultimately less sales because the amount of game developers is either larger than or equal to or just substantial compared to the amount of consumers. Now that said, while you can make an argument that there are a lot of devs in the community, to say that the amount of mon devs is larger than the community itself, which I have seen, is definitely pushing it. My YouTube channel alone has a community of around 19,000 plus, and I cover around 70 to 80 games total, with a large amount of them being solo dev projects. And not only that, I'm not conceited in any way to think that my YouTube channel is even close to the full scope of the monster taming community. You have games like Pokemon that sell millions of copies. There's also SMT fans, Digimon fans, or even on the indie side of things, you have games like Nexamon and Coromon getting over a million downloads, etc. So if you want to make the argument that there is a large dev to player ratio, you can try to do that. But to say that there's more devs than players or even close to the amount of devs as players is simply not the case. But anyways, back to the idea that more games equals less attention for each. This is actually true to an extent, especially when games very similar to one another. If you have too many monster taming games that do the exact same thing, then only particular games will shine, whilst others will fall into the background. However, I do think that there is a fundamental issue with looking at the monster taming genre as one demographic. Monster taming is more of an umbrella term to describe games where you can collect, tame, and or battle monsters, rather than a rigid category only containing one set of like-minded games. We have monster taming turn-based RPGs, we have monster taming games with real-time combat, we have monster taming bullet hell games, we have monster taming games with companion-based combat, monster taming roguelikes, hell, we even have a monster taming third-person shooter. So while us monster taming enthusiasts will flock to all of these games, the wider public will pick and choose. Many people whom are fans of, let's say, Nexomon wouldn't touch a game like Shin Megami Tensei because, despite the fact that both are still turn-based, one is a lot more complex and plays a lot differently than the other, despite the fact that they're both monster taming games. Now let's think about games that are completely different, like I just mentioned, and the gap widens. I mean, hell, I've actually had to defend SMT from people saying it's not a monster taming game because Pokemon fans wouldn't enjoy it, because some people think that only Pokemon-like games or Pokemon-inspired games should count despite how rigid that makes the genre. Throughout my time here on the platform, we've showcased many games that definitely fit into the monster taming umbrella and others that borrow elements from the genre but could be defined as mon lights or games with monster taming elements. But all of this is to say that I don't see a problem with the current amount of games provided these games bring forth something new to the table and the repeat is not too vast. Now, all that said, I do think that there are a lot of monster taming Kickstarter campaigns particularly, and this can actually hurt because, at least in my experience covering these games, the core monster taming fan base are the ones that are funding these projects via Kickstarter, and if new Kickstarters are popping up every couple weeks, it'll make people pick and choose which they can afford, which will inevitably leave some games unfunded or even undiscovered in many cases. I think if a developer is planning on going the Kickstarter route, as of now, they need to have a significant amount of the game completed and a backup plan as well, because while funding in the monster taming genre is abundant, it's not guaranteed, especially when we get conflicting campaign times. Another thing of note is going to be release dates, and again, this comes down to which games are similar to one another. For example, Monster Crown and Rainbow Billy are releasing within one week of each other, but other than hardcore monster taming enthusiasts, the games have very different demographics, with one of them being very colorful and non-violent, whilst the other has a death scene pretty early on in the game. In this case, yeah, there's no issue with the games releasing right next to each other because they're very different, but let's say Temtem Full Access and Chain Monsters Full Access launch basically a couple days from each other. These are both monster taming MMOs, and while they do handle various aspects of their games quite differently, they are similar enough in principle to where you could see some divide in sales as a result. However, I don't see too many games that are that similar that'll run into this issue if I'm being honest. 
In my experience, most monster taming games bring forth their own reason for existing and spin on the genre. Monster Crown has crazy crossbreeding mechanics, Cassette Beast has an algorithmic fusion mechanic, Coromon has its potential system, Nexomon has its amazing art and characters, Untamed Isles has its limb swapping, Kindred Fates has its real-time combat, Sky Climbers has city building, etc, 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 etc. So all that said, do I think the monster taming genre is oversaturated? No, and that's as long as each new game justifies its existence with its own spin and take on the genre. Do I think that perhaps there are too many Kickstarter campaigns too close to one another? I mean, yes, but also no, because so far over 90% of these games are still getting funded despite being back to back. And I think a lot of that has to do with how different each game can be or is. So are there a lot of Mon games? Yes, but monster taming is such a broad term that it encapsulates many different takes on what taming and catching really means. I mean, a monster raising sim and a monster RPG are both considered monster taming games, but realistically are vastly different in both design and consumer base. To all the up and coming monster taming developers watching, don't be afraid to show off your stuff, but also keep in mind that every day we have games setting the bar higher and higher. So having your own individuality within your game is of the paramount importance. Thanks so much for watching guys. If you are a fan of the monster taming genre, definitely subscribe to stay up to date. Special thanks to our patrons, especially the mythical backers, Steelcase and Jim Hamilton. We'll see you guys next time. Peace.